about that, but Luke 4 and 18, Jesus speaking, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. And just to give y'all a little hint what I was going to preach about, because it's kind of the captive part. I, I had planned on teaching about Samson and the effects that meddling too much with things that you shouldn't be meddling with can get you. Sister Leanne, that's when this captive deal comes in. I, I think of that story because ultimately Sister Sharon Sampson was took, taken captive by the people he was actually sent to free the children of Israel from. But how many people and in, in turn, what I'm saying is we, that story I relate to the sin in general. How many people are held captive right now by sin? You know, if you read about Samson, they put his eyes out. He was blinded, but he, Sister Maria, he was blinded well before that. He couldn't see what was going on. You know, how many people walking these streets right now are in the same shape Samson is in or was in? Blinded. They, they're not aware of the dangers that's all around them. They just keep going down that road. That's the kind of people that God can deliver. People that we look at and we think, man, they're in bad shape. You know, I can't help them. Nothing I can do for them. We can't do something for them. We can pray for them. No matter, no matter what, Sister Rita, we, we may talk to them till we're blue in the face and think they ain't ever listening. But we can go on our knees and travail before God because ultimately He's the only one that can fix it anyway. We can't do it. Like I said, y'all have to bear with me. I'm kind of... <laughs> I'm winging it, winging it. But you know, we... We think about this, and I, and I look here at Hebrews 2 and 8. It says, Thou hast put all things in subjection under His feet. For in that He put all in subjection under Him. He left nothing that is not put under Him. But now we see not yet all things put under Him. Everything is under subjection to the Lord Almighty. Everything. Cancer. Brother David, I, I like to think of it like this. Cancer to him ain't no different than a cold or something. You know? we And I'm not knocking it. It's a horrible thing. And we do view it as a horrible thing. And we should. It's bad. But to God, it's not. He can touch it in an instant just like He can anything else. And that person can walk the rest of their life and not ever have to worry about it again. Every problem we can have arise in our life, He can take care of. Addictions, I've been there before, Sister Sharon. I've been addicted to stuff. 
See, I, I relate with what Sister Sharon said the other night. I, I, I was addicted to alcohol, cigarettes. And, uh, there was a time in my life, Sister Maria, I thought that I would never quit those things, that they had a grip on me that would never turn loose, Sister Eloise. But when the man up there takes a hold of the situation, and I quit doing it, I quit fighting the battle myself, and said, Lord, this is in your hands. I can't do this. I'm failing every day. He took it away. But once again, for what the problem is, you got to go to the right person for the job. Disease, sickness, demons, it doesn't matter what it is, he can take care of it. We look at the world, it's crazy. Mess going on, you, you read about it on the news, you see it on the news, you hear it on the news. Bad every day. Jesus Christ has been, will be, is, always will be the answer to that stuff till the day He returns to take us home. And I don't think, we can't ever forget that. The answer, as I just said, is in Jesus, through the power of the Holy Ghost. John 14 and 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That kind of sums everything up. Every bit of it. The way. If you follow Him, you're going to go the right way. The truth. He's the truth. There, we ain't no denying that. And the life. You don't know life. Until you've been baptized with the Holy Ghost, so to speak. I, I call it baptized with the Holy Ghost. Baptized in that water. Speaking a new language. That's life. See, like I said, I thought I was living before. But when the right man for the job got a hold of my life, he turned my life around. And I'll never be the same. You see, I, I knew for a long time that I had a call on my life. I run from it. To be honest with you, I couldn't see myself standing up here either. And it's just like tonight. Sometimes you just give it all to God and say, here it is. And that's what I've done with my ministry, and just like tonight. You just got to trust Him. I thought, Lord, I can't speak in front of people. And now at times I can't shut up telling about what God's done for me. They make fun of me about it, Brother Larry, but I can't help it. If, and I don't want to seem like I'm wallowing in my past, but I want people to understand. See, if you knew... If you knew where I come from, where He brought me from, you'd know why I can't shut up about Him right now. I shouldn't be here, Brother Marcus. And I know you understand that. I shouldn't be here. But I realize He kept me for a reason. I think, I don't want to embarrass her. Lord knows I don't. I think about my sister-in-law over there. I'm going to be honest with y'all. 
I never thought I'd see her sitting right there. She knows where I come from. But that's another one of them deals. When you just do what God tells you to do and start living the life that He wants you to live, He'll impact people that you had no idea that you was impacted. Because He's the man who can. It's not me. I'm just doing what He's telling me to do. Just like tonight. I'm just doing what He's telling me to do. I sit right over. I said, Lord, don't do this to me. I, I got, I'll show y'all. I got all my stuff in that notebook over there. All pretty and nice. And had it all laid down. Gave Brother Mark my scriptures. My sister had a picture I was going to put up. And he sit right there and said, don't do it. He sees farther down the road than I do. I think about Legion, Brother David, when I was talking about people that we think was the worst of the worst. And then being held captive, he was demon-possessed. Legion with many Many demons. But you see, we got to realize something. When they seen Jesus, they knew they were leaving. Sister Nadine, if you read that story... They begin to, to in my try to make a deal with Jesus. They don't cast us, cast us into the swine. See, they knew this man had been exiled. They put him out in the tombs. Nobody wanted to deal with him. He sit out there, and this is what sin will do to you. He sit out there. Cutting himself. And you can imagine, Sister Maria, he was scarred up. The Bible says he was naked. They would bind him with chains and fetters, but he would break them. But he was still bound. Sin and the devil had a grip on him. But it don't matter what kind of grip it has on me, you, anybody. When the man for the job shows up, it breaks. Jesus touched that man so much that the townspeople didn't even recognize him. When they come and found him clothed, sitting in his right mind. That's what kind of God I'm talking about. That once again can take something that society and we would say ourselves, man, that's pretty. Whoo. But when the master gets a hold of it, it's a whole new ball game. We done stepped on a different field. Once again, I will reference what Sister Eloise said about the first thing she done was start getting a hold of people to pray. And then she starts travailing before God. That's what we need to do. We got to get our problems to the problem solver. We need to get people whose lives are a mess to the problem solver. He is the life changer, the life giver. As I said, when you're filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it's 
Whew, I just can't. I, I could sit up here all day, Brother Doyle, and try to explain it. It wouldn't do me no good. Because until you experience it for yourself, you really won't understand what I'm talking about. You think about Acts 2, 38, 39, where uh, the plan of salvation. But verse 39, it, I'm paraphrasing. It's for everybody. It's not for a select few, Brother Larry. He didn't pick out a few people, you know. We're not special, so to speak. Anybody can get this. All you got to do is have faith and believe. Everybody needs this. It's your ticket to heaven. And I, I don't know about y'all, but it don't take but a little bit of heat in the summertime, and I know I don't want to go to the other place. <laughs> Isaiah 9 and 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. But you see, I have got a couple more. He is our Deliverer. He's our Healer, Sister Eloise. I think about what Sister Stephanie said about a young man who had the four-wheeler wreck when they thought his hip was broke. And then they're on the airplane or whatever, and I may get this wrong, but they could tell where his hip had been out of socket. You see, had been. It wasn't no more because he's our healer. When people start calling upon the master physician, there's things. How many, how many things could we talk to doctors and say, we can't explain, we have no idea what's happened here. When people, that they was, just like Brother David, they sent him somewhere for a problem. He gets there, he don't have a problem no more. What are you doing here? Why did they send you here? Well, see, I know why, and he does too. Because the master physician stepped in. The man who can showed up. He is our provider. Whatever we need, He will provide. You just, I'm not going to preach on money. That ain't my job. But I can tell you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, when it comes to this provider thing, it don't, know, it don't matter, Brother Pete, how much you think you don't got. Just keep giving. My wife can testify to this. We would, I, I would show you our bank records of how we should not have made it the last couple of years. And as you can tell, I'm still eating plenty. I still got on some decent clothes. I got shoes on my feet. I got a vehicle to drive. I got a house to live in. You see, you can't mess with it. You just do your part. He takes care of the rest. He amazes me with this. I shouldn't be amazed anymore. I shouldn't. But I am. It's still just, you know, because this Sharon, I've got to the point where if I have to give my last $10 in that offering pan and wonder how I'm going to make it for two weeks, that's what I do. 
And he never ceases to amaze me. When you get called in the office at work to get an award that you had no idea even existed for your company. And I've had it happen two times. Two times. And one time, I'm just going to tell you this. One time, the first time it actually happened, we had pledged some money. So much a month for a whole year. I'm going to be honest with you, we didn't really have it to play, but we did it. And a couple days later, they called me in to the office, and I got this little, de- I call it a debit card or whatever it is. It had money on it, that's all I know. And I didn't ask no questions or nothing. They told me it was for having a good driving record and yada, 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 and I didn't have no idea that our company even done that. And when I looked on the back, this Maria, it was for if you take 12 months times what we pledged a month, that's what my car was for. So you can't tell me he won't provide. And I could go on and on. My wife could come up here and tell you stories. I, I'm, I know y'all can too. But I got the microphone tonight. (laughs) I got to take advantage of it while I got it. (laughs) And just like I said at the beginning, you want something fixed, you have to get it to the person who can fix it. You know, I don't understand, Sister Judy. I'm who I used to be horrible about this. You know, I'm getting better about it. But like I said, I call my daddy for everything. And I don't want to think about it, but who knows what I'm going to do when he's gone. Same thing about my mama. She fattens me up. That's who I call when I want something to eat. <laughs> but. See, in life, Brother Terry, that's how we do things. You don't waste your time messing with somebody that's not going to get the job done for you. Just like I said, I, and, I, and my father-in-law helps me out too. If he ain't here, I wish he was, but he's not. But I call him for stuff too. Because I know the things that he can do. And I'm not the handiest fella in the world. I don't know how I missed that gene. But I missed it. But I can do some stuff. But but if I need, if Brother David needs carpentry work done, he calls a carpenter. If my vehicle's tore up, I call Brother Michael. I wish he was here too. But you see, we we go straight to who we know can take care of the problem. But sometimes, Sister Marie, we don't do that here. We try everything that we know to try before we'll take it to the problem solver, the healer, the provider, our deliverer. Uh, I, 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 and I throw myself out there, but I, I'm horrible bad about praying in front of people when I get nervous. And I, I don't even like praying for my wife at home if she's sick. She'll attest to that. I just cringe if she says, will you pray for me or one of the kids? But we've got to start doing that. That should be the first thing we do. Start there and then we go to The doctor. We pray for him just like uh, Sister Courtney did. Not saying don't go to the doctor. You pray for them babies or whoever the whole way up there. And when you get up there, you'll have a whole different situation than what you thought you had when you was on your way. 
And instead of sitting there, and I've probably been a basket case, with our head all buried up, talking about how bad a situation this is, and I'm not belittling it. But just like Sister Eloise said, he's a great big God. Great big. When you think he just spoke the world into existence. And we're going to worry about some little something that might be wrong in our life. I'm paraphrasing again, but what's the Bible say? That they, they couldn't, books in the world couldn't contain the books of the things that Jesus done. It's not fathomable to us. We don't understand that. We can't comprehend that. But the Bible, it ain't, it ain't no lies in there. So you know what? It's the truth. And when it says that the world couldn't contain the books, it wouldn't be able to contain them. So why should we worry about any little thing that comes along? Take it to the person who can fix it. I'm fixing to shut up. I've got one last little thing. <clears throat> Brother Mark, if you'll turn to Mark chapter 5, verse 20. We'll start with verse 20, I guess. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. And this was legion. Who I'm just talking about was doing this. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him. See, here we go again, people. They done heard about him. You know, we have too. We've heard about him. I know what he can do. We got to go to him. <clears throat> 